So without further ado, I get to talk about an update on benign thyroid disease and treatment. Just a note, I have put my email address on the front page. If anyone has any questions at any time, don't hesitate to reach out. I may or may not know the answer, but I'm certainly happy to try and find out uh, one way or the other. All right, so we've already discussed my uh, disclosure of commercial interest, so I will skip over that today. In terms of hyperthyroidism, so it's benign thyroid disease is very common. They actually think it affects about 12% of Americans during their lifetime. And there are several risks associated with this. So I thought it was very fitting that Dawn put me on this one, as I am female and it is much more common in women. It's also common in older age, but I won't take that as any sort of hidden comment, as well as in obesity. Symptoms include tremor, sweating, weight loss, hyperkinesis, nervousness, increased metabolic rate, intestinal motility, tachycardia, arrhythmias, most notably you get extra systolic beats as well as atrial fibrillation, um, proximal muscle weakness, amenorrhea, emotional instability and irritability. Um, patients greater than 75 years of age can have pretty subtle symptoms. So again, I spoke about musculoskeletal diseases earlier on, and you always have to be careful when you're dealing with the older uh, patient population because they can present a little bit more subtly, a little bit delayed. They'll often present with apathy, fatigue, mood disturbances, and shortness of breath. So always important to consider the possibility of abnormalities of the thyroid gland and to do the appropriate blood work and imaging. Um, remember that you can get decreased bone mineral density with this, so you may want to consider doing a BMD in this patient group as well. And you can also get gestational transient thyrotoxicosis. So what happens is the elevated human chorionic gonadotropin stimulates the TSH receptor around the 12th to 16th week of pregnancy. It tends to improve spontaneously in the second trimester. It can be associated with hyperemesis, gravidarum, as well as weight loss, dehydration, electrolyte disturbances. It tends not to be associated with a goiter or ophthalmopathy. So there were a couple of very nice articles that were published in J&M in 2021. There was actually a supplement that was devoted to thyroid, and I highly recommend part one and part two uh, of the articles in that supplement in terms of the role of nuclear medicine in the management of benign thyroid disorders. Here I've just taken a table from that particular article, which shows all the different organs and some of the effects you can see with uh, an excess of thyroid hormone. The causes of hyperthyroidism, there are several. In general, you want to try to understand whether the patient had a normal daily iodine intake or abnormal, meaning often it would be a deficiency of iodine intake. I've given you what the normal uh, iodine intake should be daily, and if you are in a situation where you suspect there's normal daily iodine intake, your most common cause of hyperthyroidism by far is Graves. It's associated with orbitopathy, dermopathy, and acropachy, and I would say the majority of the cases I see in the clinic are indeed Graves. In terms of iodine deficiency, the most common cause is actually a toxic multinodular goiter, which again is not surprising if we remember our images from other parts of the world where people will have iodine deficiency. They often present with these massive masses, basically their thyroid glands, in their neck. And that can be associated with tracheal esophageal deviation as well as compression. There are other considerations, and you should always keep these in mind. So you can have a toxic thyroid adenoma. They think that happens maybe in about 5% of these cases, and it's actually related to a somatic mutation of TSHR, uh, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone receptor. You can have a destructive thyroiditis, and it can be drug-induced. One of the most common medications to think of is amiodarone, although also lithium can have effects on the thyroid. You can have fictitious hyperthyroidism, excessive pituitary TSH production, or pituitary resistance to thyroid hormones. These are much more rare compared. 